which means Bobby Mack is certainly tuned up, and he is ready to go. Bobby, it's oh, Jimmy yeah. B and Manooch. How are you, pal? T- tuned up with what, Jim? Yeah, what are you just, insinuating? I'm just, I'm just saying he's tuned up. <laughs> I'm probably not as good as you guys are, but that music always puts me in a good mood. So as long as I hear that, I'm good. We uh, <laughs> And just so so for FAA regulations, uh, we can't get tuned up until uh, after the show. Four just o'clock. So you know, four oh. o'clock, so yeah. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> Damn, so you are a professional, huh? Computer. You are you are a professional oh, yeah. there, Bob? Yeah. Well, you, you don't go nearly half a century doing this without saying I'm being a professional. So uh, that yeah, is you know, correct. That are, just so lucky, is, I think, maybe. What, what is your professional opinion? Uh, it looks as though uh, D-Hop is officially released as of, what, about a couple hours ago. So. Yeah. As, as you look at him hitting the waiver wire, um, you know it looks like it, it could be a bid between two or three teams. Now that he's released, the contract is behind him from that standpoint. But uh, it, no surprise, a lot of folks I think that they were not going to get the second or third round pick. Teams are not going to pick up nineteen point four million dollar right. contract. All the above. From what you can surmise, was there any kind of potential restructuring? To make it more palatable for someone to make a trade for uh, D Hop. Well, now they can offer him as a free agent. He can sign right. for whatever he can get. Uh, so there's no restructuring really needed. They didn't get anything for him. Therefore, his contract is null and void. And he's now unrestricted, and I just don't think he's going to find a, a team that's willing to pay him anything close to what he was going to make here or what Odell Beckham Jr. got in Baltimore. That being said, there's at least three to seven teams I keep my eyes on it, the top two being the Chiefs and the Bills for obvious reasons. But my team that I think he's going to end up with, take a guess. Cleveland Browns. Mm, Ravens. Possible. Ravens can uh, find some more room not over anymore. there. Not anymore. No, I don't think so. I, I think the Browns are a possibility, but that's not my team. They're, they're one of the seven candidates I think where he's going to end up. I'm not going to write about it. I'm just surmising with you sure. guys. but. And your audience, I think it's going to be the L.A. Chargers. Wow, it could be. Yeah, they it, got everything that he wants. Yeah, that's true. And and I More think, less, a, I think. And, and, and a user friendly coach, you know, on top of that as well too. Yeah, that might adhere to him. But, yeah, my question was, my question with Bob was, was there any, was there any work to try to get something done before they released him, or did that fall on just on empty hands per se? No, they were going to move on from him. I don't think he was willing to restructure or renegotiate unless it meant ending this relationship with a trade. Uh, they could have helped. They could have ate, eaten some of his money. If they could have found a trade partner that was willing to pay for some, if not most, of that contract. The Cardinals would have had to eat a lot for, for anything to happen, I think. Therefore, they didn't make the trade and just released him, taking the big cap hit this year, which means they're not going to be very good next year, this year coming up. That's okay. They'll be a lot better in 2024 and 2025, certainly, I would assume. All right. but I, I get it, and Manooch gets it, and you understand it, but how do you sell that to your fan base? You don't. You don't. It, it's really difficult to do that. Usually you're trying everything you can do to improve your roster. I think they'll, they'll do that, but you can tell just by the way they approach free agency, uh, and especially the draft, that they're looking to build – moving forward, not necessarily now. And that's not a bad strategy. Eventually, at some point, you have to stop the bleeding and start over. Deep Time was un- wanting to do that, and I get it. He was under pressure from Michael Bidwell to keep a winner on the field, and I didn't think they were far apart. Look, two, less than two years ago, they were at 1.7-0 and 10-2. and mm-hmm. They were the talk of the NFL. They were the number one seed at that moment in time, but Things have collapsed so far since then that they had to do something. And that, that's placing the tourniquet on, maybe severing the limbs. They'll let, hopefully let it regrow again. And in this case, I think they've done that. Monty Austin Ford's done a pretty good job uh, with his draft maneuverability. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to the time where he starts making some trades, and that's when you're going to see what this team is going to be. You know, Bobby, you, you look at it now that you know, D-Hop is gone, and, and uh, you know, we just had you know, Kyle... Van den Bosch, Sean, you talk about Zach Gallon. Yeah. Allen is gone. You got Murphy Jr. gone. Golden moves on to uh, as a free agent to the to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. You have Buda Baker's yep. question mark. No D Hop. I mean, 
that's that's a lot of cachet from the starting standpoint a National Football League team to lose. It is, and I'll be interesting to see, interested to see what happens with the season ticket base. How many people hang on? How many people let go? Um, what they can do to keep it interesting and exciting? And I think it's so. Hey, don't look at us now, but wait till we get to twenty twenty four. They've got to come up with some sort of slogan like. We're not that far behind. It's not going to be great this year, but it's, it could be really super fun to watch in a year or two. And that's how you got to sell it. One one bad year could not a lot of great results for this team, especially if they're drafted one and two, like we talked about so many times on your show. All right. Under your philosophy, what do they do then when Kyler Murray's doctors say, okay, he's cleared the play? Come on, Bobby. Where are you on that one? I, unlike most people, unlike most people, I think he's going to be back sooner than everyone mm-hmm. expects. I I don't know if September's in the cards for him, so to speak, but I, I don't think he's going to miss more than three or four games. That's just me believing what I've seen and what I know from having watched him, knowing him, hearing what's being said about him and how invested and engaged he is this off season, being at every – every possible event and practice he can be at despite not practicing. Uh, one of the first guys in the building. That, that's impressive. That wasn't Tyler Murray that we knew until now. So I think that bodes well. Well, I think what Jimmy's probably alluded to is no need to, no reason to rush him back until he's 110% no. plus and they've tested him on top of that. Yeah, they could choose to keep him uh, sidelined longer than – necessary perhaps as a way to help sell this one year i don't want to call it a tank but that's what people are calling it so let's not hide behind names it's it's like a they're just not going to be very good this year uh why rush him back i get it but Tyler wants to be rushed back i think when his body is able and he's ready to be able to protect himself and do the things he can do uh but it'll be up to him but the Cardinals will have a say so so will the coach and the, and the training staff. I, I don't know how they're going to meet heads there, all three together, but it's got to be something they all can agree on peacefully and that makes the most sense. We'll see what that is. I don't know. I just don't personally think it's going to be half a year or longer. Your OTA's assumptions, what do, what do you take away from that? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, I, there's too many guys switching positions for me to even keep up with it half the time. And, um, I, I get it. He wants to see what people can do in a pinch. But moving guys all over the place on the line at, at linebacker and the secondary, he's trying, to, he's trying to make some competition happen before there needs to be any contact, before it's allowed. And I, I get that. He wants to see what he is and how they react to, to being um, maybe in some – unfamiliar positions and places. That's why he's in the meeting rooms. He's challenging these guys, calling them out, making him, making them not only recite, but recall and remember exactly what happens on every single play. Uh, and he's pushing. It's a, it's a competition in the meeting room too. And he said that that was going to be just like that. Obviously we're not in the meeting rooms, but we're hearing that that's going on. And that's, that's fostering good development, cohesion, and competition. And even though they might not win more than four games, they're going to be competitive within, and that's where it starts on building a new team from the bottom up. It's always good, pal, when we talk NFL football yeah. with you. Yeah, man. You have a, uh, a great uh, evening, okay? I will, my friends. You too. Diablo and- Taco Tuesday or whatever you call it. <laughs> El Bandito. Love it. El Bandito. Yes, Te- right. Tequila One of these Tuesday. Days. Yes, sir. You tequila got Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. We got all kind of Tuesdays got going, going on, on Bobby. Thank you, brother. Tuesday's rule.